I like it when coaches ice the kicker, Robbie Gold said. I wish every coach would do that and give me the opportunity. Well, opportunity knocked. It is Friday. How are you? Lauren Shahadi here with your daily sports update presented by Toyota. Robbie Gold knew the Bears had to make a push and finish out the season strong, but all he worried about was finishing off those New Orleans Saints. Don't toy with a Pro Bowl kicker. He'll boot you right out of Soldier Field just like that. He connected from 35 yards out on Chicago's first possession of overtime, lifting the Bears to a 27-24 victory and boosting their playoff hopes in the process. And this is not the first time the Saints have left Chicago with a loss. In fact, the Bears gave the Saints season-ending losses the past two years. This time, New Orleans left their playoff hopes on the plane. So what does this mean for the Bears postseason? I'm glad you asked. Chicago is a half game behind NFC North leader Minnesota, but the Vikings hold the tiebreaker. Chicago also is a half game out of a wild card spot. So the only bit of good news for the Saints yesterday was that the federal judge extended his injunction against the suspensions of Will Smith, Deuce McAllister, and Charles Grant for violating the league's anti-doping policy. Translation, they will play out the rest of the regular season. The three Saints, along with Kevin and Pat Williams of the Minnesota Vikings, tested positive during training camp for a banned diuretic in the dietary supplement Star Caps. An attorney for the NFL Players Association said afterwards, the players and the union are thrilled. You know who should be thrilled? Tim Tebow's parents. That guy's cleaning house. Perhaps he can make a little bit more room in that trophy case for a second Maxwell Award presented to him Thursday night for college football's best all-around player. He edged out some familiar competition in Colt McCoy of Texas and Graham Harrell of Texas Tech for the prestigious honor but they didn't all leave empty-handed. Colt McCoy was the Walter Camp Player of the Year, leading the All-America team. Sam Bradford of Oklahoma won the Davey O'Brien Award. Bradford directed the highest-scoring team in major college football history. He led the nation in passer rating and touchdown passes with 48 while throwing for 4,464 yards because he can. Michael Crabtree's hands brought in the Bolitnikoff. He was honored as the best wide receiver. What happens when the league's best faces one of the league's worst? I'll tell you what, it ain't pretty. And by not pretty, I mean not even close. The Boston Celtics are 21-2, and two, off to the best start in the franchise's storied history. We're talking about the likes of Bill Russell, Larry Bird, not even they were this good this early. 122-88, the score marking the NBA champions. 13th consecutive victory, KG commented after the game. I've been a big fan of history to establish ourselves in that history that's so enriched with culture and prestige and tradition. It is a very great thing. More news out of the NBA. New York Knicks guard Katino Mobley retired from the NBA on Thursday because of a heart disease that he said has gotten worse. Mobley said doctors told him he faced significant risks if he kept playing, the veteran said. By walking away now, he could live a normal life. His condition causes the heart muscle to thicken, making it harder to pump blood. And Mobley said he had no choice but to end his career. The Knicks acquired Mobley last month from the LA Clippers, a trade that may have ultimately saved his life because an EKG during his physical was what showed an irregularity with his heart. Over his 11-year career with four teams, he averaged 16 points a game. On the diamond, the Chicago Cubs are out on the Jake Peavy deal. They have decided to look elsewhere, and elsewhere could be fulfilling that need for a left-handed bat, where Milton Bradley may be targeted. 45-year-old lefty Randy Johnson may also get some attention. What the New York Mets need and what they want, they get. They wanted pitching, so they picked up a couple guys by the names of Francisco Rodriguez and J.J. Putz, an all-star in 2007 when he saved 40 games. Putz was 6-5 and five with 3.88 ERA and 15 saves and 23 chances last season. Putz joins new closer K-Rod as the team tries to get past the choke artist label with Phillies pitcher Cole Hamels, the latest to refer to the Mets in that manner, further fueling that rivalry. Two hat tricks, one game, a whole lot of excitement for all involved. Penguins, Islanders, nine goals for the Penguins, six of them scored by two people, three of them apiece. Peter Sikora ended the longest streak in NHL history without a hat trick by a player who had at least two goals in a game. And Pascal Dupuis also scored three times. Oh yeah, Pittsburgh won nine to two. Today is Friday. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'm Lauren Shahadi. I'll see you next week.